I want to thank the um, Office of the Attorney General, the uh, Bureau of Corrections, and all of the other testifiers, as well as Ms. Clemma Lewis and Anya Stewart, for being here this morning. Um, I have been working on this legislation for well over a year, well over two years actually. And this legislation was actually brought to my attention by a young woman that previously worked in my office, Amber Lewis. And I always believe that it's important to give credit where credit is due. Uh, this legislation seeks to expand the notification to victims and it requires that victims are notified when the perpetrators or alleged perpetrator is released back into the community. Bill number 34-0141 seeks to protect victims and defines crimes against the person as criminal offenses which involve bodily harm, such as assault, battery, kidnapping, and rape, and it requires notification of those vict of notification of the victims or to the victims. This definition expands the notification beyond domestic violence as currently in the law. So one would argue, why are we having this discussion when there is already a notification uh, component in the law? But the law basically speaks only to domestic violence. And we all know of all of the criminal activities and all of the crimes that we are seeing here in our community. And we recognize that there are persons in our community who have been victims of uh, assault and battery, rape, who are not in a uh, a domestic violence who, where the situation was not related rather to domestic mm -hmm. violence and while we have a victims and witness bill of rights under title, title 34 chapter 8 that bill of rights does not delineate, delineate the process of notification it does not ensure accountability to victims when a person who have violated them is released back into the community. And the current Bill of Rights basically says, a victim of prosecution witness has a right to be informed of a defendant's release on bail. A victim or prosecution witness has a right to be informed of post-sentence hearing affecting the probation or parole of the officer. A victim of prosecution witness has a right to be informed when the conviction offender receives a temporary provisional or final release from custody, or the offender escapes from custody. So it speaks to rights, but it doesn't speak to action or the requirements of the uh, government entity to ensure that action is in fact taking place. So colleagues, the proposed legislation expands these rights. The proposed legislation requires that vic victims shall be notified by phone, email, <laughs> or by a person duly authorized to deliver a summons when the perpetrator is being released from jail, a mental health institution, or has escaped from custody. It also advises them of where the perpetrator is being released because we have inmates abroad and that is also very important to victims. The enactment of this legislation requires collaboration between the Department of Justice and the Bureau of corrections. Colleagues, community, testifiers, this proposed legislation is Im extremely impactful. We can all see what is happening in our community as I mentioned earlier. And there is no doubt that we have challenges. Victims of crimes in our community must feel safe. And this proposed measure allows for victims to prepare themselves mentally, emotionally, mm -hmm. and in some cases, physically, to prepare for the impending release of the alleged or the perpetrator. 
This measure offers victims a level of protection that they've been asking for for many, many years, but legally we could not, the government could not provide. Can you imagine walking into the grocery store and coming face to face with someone who has violated you and you were completely unaware that that individual was no longer incarcerated? This happens in our community and it continues to happen. And as a result, victims of crimes are often re-victimized because of these types of situations. This proposed measure will allow victims to participate in the judicial process with the knowledge that after they have spoken up and out and, and the person that they have spoken against is released, that they will, all, they will be so advised and not have to find out about the release walking down the street or in, a grocery st in the aisle of a grocery store. It is in fact that people who have been a victim of assault, domestic violence, rape, and other criminal offenses that involve bodily harm often suffer with physical, emo physical, emotional, and mental health issues due to these offenses. Studies suggest that being a victim of crime of this nature is directly correlated with depression and suicidal behavior. Our responsibility as Virgin Islanders and as leaders in this territory is to give victims of crime a layer of comfort and protection so that, so that they report the crimes being committed against them and others so that they are comfortable, so that they are assured that they will be safe. Additionally, not only will the bill protect victims, but this protection offered to victim is, is, victims establishes a sense of safety that encourages victims to cooperate in the judicial process. There's no doubt that our legal system depends on involvement and cooperation of victims of crimes. Expanding victim notification aligns the Virgin Islands with 41 other states that currently have a notification system beyond domestic violence. And that quote came from the Council of State Government and American Probation and Parole Association. Colleagues and uh, testifiers, at the appropriate time, uh, I will be bringing an amendment addressing the concerns of the Department of Justice that the Department of Justice, via the Attorney General and her team, shared that the notification will be the responsibility of the Bureau of Corrections. Colleagues, this morning I ask for your support on Bill Number 34-0141. Your, your support, as I'm sure that all of you know, they, I, I believe that the majority of, if not all, I think with the exception of the female colleague, uh, all have all been um, have touched law enforcement in one way or the other in this territory. So I believe that um, you understand what, we're, what I'm trying to do here and I'm asking you for your support as we um, discuss this measure, as we deliberate on this measure. Um, it is my fervent hope that we will be able to move this legislation forward today. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chair, for the time. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Madam Press, for that eloquent and very thorough review of your bill. Um, Attorney General, uh, you may proceed with your yes. testimony. Yes. Good morning, Chairman Payne, Senators, legislative staff, fellow testifiers, and those of you listening and viewing. My name is Denise N. George, and I am the Virgin Islands Attorney General. With me today are Assistant Attorney General Amy Simpson, Chief of the Criminal Division of St. Croix, as well as Elma Brathwaite, the Director of the DOJ Victim Services Unit. 
Um, let me say first that um, I did receive an amendment this morning that addresses some of the issues that I raise and I'm going to be raising in this testimony, but I will con I would read the testimony thoroughly anyway, and then we can, you know, the changes will be made later. Um, I am indeed honored to have been invited to give remarks on Bill number 340141. Uh, the purpose of this measure is to amend Title 34, Virgin Islands Code, Chapter 8, to require the Virgin Islands Attorney General's Office to expeditiously notify victims of certain crimes of the release or impending release of their perpetrator. I applaud Senator Gregory's intent behind introducing this proposed legislation because notifying victims of the release from prison of the ones who have hurt them is essential to assuring and maintaining the safety and security of crime victims in our community. The Department of Justice remains fully committed to protecting victims and witnesses of violent crimes. However, I cannot support this bill in its current form for several reasons, which I've outlined in the past. I would now like to reiterate those points. First, the mandate on the DOJ to notify victims of the releases is misplaced. The DOJ does not have the knowledge or the knowledge of or access to any information regarding the release of inmates from the Bureau of Corrections. That is fully under the jurisdiction and control of the BOC, which is the most appropriate agency to assure the prompt and advanced notification that this proposed measure requires. Although desirable, DOJ does not have any link or access to that information to carry out such a mandate. Additionally, the Virgin Islands Code already mandates victim notification on the government institutions that are in the best position to provide it. For example, Title V, BIC, Section 4606, B-C, B through C, places the following requirements on the parole board. It says, unless waived by the victim, the Territorial Parole Board shall, with at least 30 days prior notice, advise the victim of the following. One, that an inmate, an inmate is being considered for parole. Two, the date of the parole hearing. And three, the victim's right to submit documents to and provide testimony before the board at the hearing. And C, the Territorial Parole Board shall notify the victim at least 24 hours prior to an inmate being paroled. Second, regarding the notification of alleged victims of a suspected perpetrator's pre-conviction release, the responsibility has been placed on the courts ordering the release for several of the crimes addressed in today's measure. For example, the duties of the court in criminal actions of domestic violence, which includes rape and unlawful sexual contact, state when a defendant charged with a crime or offense involving domestic violence is released from custody before trial on bail or personal recognizance, the clerk of the court or other person designated by the court shall provide a copy of this order to the victim forthwith. Third, while this proposed measure assigns responsibility for victim notification to the DOJ, it contradicts Section 203C of the Virgin Islands Code, which already places that same responsibility squarely on the Bureau of, Bureau of Corrections. Section 203, subsection C, says that subsection C6 and 7 of this section are the responsibility of the Bureau of Corrections. C6 and 7 state, a victim or prosecution witness which has a right to be informed of post-sentence hearings affecting the probation or parole of an offender. And A and, and 7, a victim or prosecution witness has a right to be informed when the convicted offender receives a temporary provisional or final release from custody or the offender escapes from custody words, the courts and the BOC have already been tasked with the notification requirements, and today's proposed measure complicates matters by 
making multiple agencies, departments, and branches of government equally responsible for the same tasks, which can appear wasteful and redundant. An effective process of notification needs to be as streamlined as possible, connecting the information from the agency that has the information to the agencies and persons who need to get it seamlessly. Taking a look at section one, subsection 2E of proposed measure, it states that the DOJ, in conjunction with the Bureau of Corrections, when applicable, shall notify a victim when a person is released on, the per on personal recognizance or is released from a medical or mental health institution, escape from custody, or have completed their term of incarceration. Regarding the first circumstance, as discussed earlier, when someone is released on bail or their own recognizance, the courts are already statutorily mandated to make the notifications. And regarding the latter two, as I've been saying all along, it, it will always be necessary for the DOJ to work in conjunction with the BOC, but the onus for the release notification has to be placed on the BOC because the DOJ will have no idea if someone escapes from BOC custody or when the offender has completed their term of incarceration. Further, as it is written, this measure requires manpower that DOJ does not have to perform the responsibilities placed on it. This includes the four-month deadline to establish and promulgate rules and regulations to carry out the mandate by an already overburdened legal staff, also, the 30-day advance notice requirement to potentially hundreds of crime victims by the DOJ Victim Services Unit, which is now a unit of one and is now wholly unattainable. Efforts to fund criminal victim advocate posi positions in the DOJ proposed uh, 2022 budget were denied by this body. So currently, we have one director on St. Thomas and no victim advocate on St. Croix regardless of whether today's contemplated legislation is passed as is or amended, the fact remains that the DOJ still requires these critical positions to create a fully functioning victim services unit. And finally, Section 1B of the measure requires the use of several methods of notification as applicable, yet requires all methods to be used by the use of the conjunction and this would make the process impracticable, overly burdensome, and redundant. The proposed language lists four methods of victim notification. One, victim information and notification everyday system, or VINE, which is a VINE system. Two, phone call. Three, email. And four, service in person by a person authorized to serve summons and complaints. The and really should be changed to or. All of the methods, the only of all of the methods, the only one that I believe could fully and effectively achieve the objectives of this me measure in notifying victims is the vine. As a part of the office's due diligence for this hearing, we reach out to the people who operate the vine program and had a productive discussion about the cost and features of this system. It is not cheap, but the benefits, of, uh, the benefits to the victims would be well worth it. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this system, it is the nation's leading victim notification network. It allows survivors, victims of crime, and other concerned citizens to access timely and reliable information about offenders in victim in, in um, offenders or criminal cases. Currently, it is available in various parts of 48 states and nearly Uh, currently, or its main purpose is to allow victims um, to be given updates by a Attorney General, email. Attorney General, just one second. Right. Attorney okay. General. Right. 
power just went out. Can you hear me? Well, oh. you, you started freezing. So I need to go back and start from uh, the second sentence where you started for those who are unfamiliar with this process, with this system. For those? Okay. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me well now? Because our power is still out here, the GRS building. Yes, we can. But you can hear me well now? Yes, ma'am, we can. Okay. Okay, I'll continue. For those who are unfamiliar with this system, it is the nation's leading victim net notification network. It allows survivors, victims of crime, and other concerned citizens to access timely and reliable information about offenders or criminal cases. Currently, it is available in various parts of 48 states and nearly 3,000 detention facilities. Its main purpose is to allow victims to be given updates via text, email, or phone the status of offenders incarcerated or recently released. The system allows any individual to access this information, which proves useful to victim advocacy groups or watchdog groups, as well as any other concerned citizen. Unfortunately, I have only had the one meeting with the buying representative, so my information is very limited, but I'm impressed and hopeful that this can be used to secure the safety and security of crime victims and witnesses in the territory that need these notifications. Additionally, I spoke with BOC Director Testamark, who is intimately familiar with the Vine system and can attest to its effectiveness at correctional facilities stateside, which is another reason which makes BOC the best candidate for its implement implementation as well. I will point out, though, that there is no funding source in the proposed measure to support any of the notification methods, including the BINE. This would require an amendment identifying funds in order to make real crime victim notification happen for the persons who need it. In short, DOJ does not support today's measure as it is currently drafted, uh, but would be more than willing to work with the sponsor to make expeditious crime victim notification a reality. I believe that this measure should be amended in the following manner, that the BIND system be fully funded, uh, the bind, that the BIND system be, a, be the, an established method of notification to victims, that uh, to establish the BIND system under the Bureau of Corrections with links to the Department of Justice and the Superior Court and other victim services and stakeholders. I would again like to thank the chair of this committee for allowing me to testify on bill number 34-0141. And I, along with my team, St. Croix criminal chief, who is familiar with how the vine works and the director of victim services, Elma Brathwaite are available to address any questions and concerns that the members may have. Thank you.